So who was Immanuel Kant? Immanuel Kant was the most influential philosopher of the modern period, which means really up until today. And he was obsessed with the idea of explaining the limits and nature of truth by observing the nature of the human mind. Kant did a lot of work in general theory of knowledge before he did his work in philosophy of art. But to understand what he's doing in philosophy of art, we need to understand some of what he did in those earlier works to understand the nature of knowledge in general. A major conclusion that Kant comes up with in his earlier works, like the Critique of Pure Reason, is that knowledge only becomes possible for humans because the human mind structures the reality outside of us by using necessary ideas and categories. Those necessary ideas and categories are things like space, time, unity, plurality, reality, negation, causality, and existence. So for Kant, all of these categories, or for him space and time, which he calls So for Kant, all of these categories, or space and time, which for him are not categories, but are the forms of intuition, the forms of sensation, are what makes a world possible for us to experience at all. Imagine, for example, the world in which we live. If you were to make sense of a world taking out spatial representation, with no space represented to us through our minds and our senses, there would be no way to separate objects from each other or to make sense of a world. Imagine making sense of the world without the function of time. If yourself now versus yourself later or an object flying through space didn't have a at time t and time t1, you couldn't represent to yourself an object at all. If a ball is flying through space, that ball can only be represented to you as a thing if you see the unity in the object from time one to time two so that it can be a flying object at all. Similarly with something like causality, cause and effect, Kant argues that we can only understand why an object let's say moves from point A to point B at all if we understand that objects move in response to being pushed by other objects. So if I have another ball that encounters the first ball and pushes it forward, I can understand the balls as separate, and I can understand how movement works, and I can move and interact in a world that follows those kinds of laws. Kant actually argues that something as simple as cause and effect is necessary for making sense of a world at all. So one way to think about this story is to think about, well, what's out there in the world? What are the things that we represent? Well, those can only be things for us if our mind has these categories according to which we can represent them for ourselves and organize them in such a way that they can even be things for us. Now interestingly with the story that Kant gives us, we might actually want to represent it in a way that's quite the opposite and this might even be more consistent with Kant's ideas. So why does the world of time and space, the world that's out there, the world that's full of objects, even exist? Well Kant would argue that those capacities like space being represented by this set of, of grid lines, or time being represented here by time's arrow, exists as a capacity in human beings. It's our way of processing the world and making sense of it. And on this view, the directionality would kind of go in the opposite way, which is to say that the categories of space and time are kind of projected out into the world 
on this view and make the world into the spatial world or the temporal world that it is because time and space are something we impose on the world on Kant's view in order to make the world representable as a thing with objects. What this means is that objects don't just exist out there in a way that might be suggested by this first view, kind of imposing themselves on the mind, because it's the mind which imposes the structure on what comes in to make a world for us. So ultimately, Kant's conclusion is, well, what is the world in itself? What is the world before the human mind makes sense of it, or the world outside of perception? And Kant's conclusion is, guess what? We just don't know. All we can ever know is how the human mind represents the world. We do know, on Kant's view, that there must be something out there to kind of impinge on our senses and start the process of creating a world for us. But Kant argues that everything from space to time to causation to unity and difference, these are all things that the mind itself imposes on the world. One way we might say this would be to say that for Kant, the world in which we live is radically subjective in that all we can know about it is how we represent the world. There's another sense, however, in which for Kant, the world in which we find ourselves, just the world that you see out in front of you, is also radically objective. It's not objective in that it would be that way if humans didn't observe it that way with the categories we impose on the world, but it's objective in that all human beings represent the world with the same basic categories, meaning all human beings will see the world in basically the same way. So on this view, it's no surprise that all human beings represent the world that's in front of us in basically the same way, because all human beings have the same categories, the same way of representing the world, so the world appears the same to all of us. Is that way the world appears, the way the world is in itself? So we can't ask if the world is like that outside of our representation, because all we know is how we represent the world. Now let's start thinking about how this relates to Kant's philosophy of art.